know what? I'm tired. I'm going to tell you the truth. Yes, I did cheat. I did cheat, everybody. I can't handle the pressure anymore. I'm falling apart. Welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times fighters got caught cheating. You're just so big and you come out of the world <laughs> of pro <it>. wrestling. <laughs> we're done. Thanks, guys. For this list, we'll be looking at instances when boxers and MMA fighters were caught red-handed cheating. Which fighter do you think went too far? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Number 10, George St. Pierre. All right, so to be clear, this wasn't George St. Pierre's fault, but this is more so on his corner man, Phil Nurse. In between rounds during his title fight against BJ Penn at UFC 94, Nurse could be seen applying Vaseline on GSP's face and then his back, the latter of which is not permitted. What were they rubbing on you? What was going on? I, I, I didn't know what happened because I was on the fight, so when you're in a fight, you don't realize what happened. Watching the fight, one could think that Penn clearly was experiencing some difficulty getting any hold or control over St. Pierre from the bottom. After losing the fight, Penn and his team requested that the Nevada State Athletic Commission conduct an investigation on the matter. Because we had the pre-ball warning and, and the commission members did catch him greasing, I wish that they did actually walk across and tell me like, hey man, you better stay off your back, man, this guy's greased, you know, your arm bars and your triangles, they're going to be worthless. Dubbed Greasegate, an investigation and hearing took place, but nothing came from either, as the commission came to the conclusion that the application of Vaseline didn't impact the outcome of the fight. In BJ Penn entry to the octagon, when he's walking to the octagon, you can see how I cheat. I hire a man to kiss BJ Penn on the mouth on his way to the octagon. And at that precise moment, BJ Penn lost all his strength and all his focus and the fight was mine. So if I cheat, yes, but not with the Vaseline. Number nine, Shane Mosley. Both of these fighters will come out of this fight elevated. No question. Big right hand by Mosley. Back in 2007, a report from Sports Illustrated included several unnamed sources going on record saying that boxer Shane Mosley used performance-enhancing drugs leading up to his fight against Oscar De La Hoya, which he won. In response, Mosley went on to admit that he indeed took steroids, but did so unknowingly, even though there's footage of him stating otherwise. Did you know you were taking EPO, yes or no? Yes. Mosley's take is that he was told by his trainer, Daryl Hudson, to take supplements from Victor Conti, founder and head of Bay Area Laboratory Cooperative. Hudson urged Mosley to take these supplements, which were steroids, which used under the pseudonyms The Cream and The Clear. Conti and several others, however, claim that Mosley knew that he was taking steroids. I came around the desk and, and he stepped back over here and we sat knee to knee and I basically showed him specifically how to inject EPO. Mosley launched a defamation suit against Conti and his company, which was dismissed. Number eight, Anderson Silva. See you in London, my friend. Yeah, see you. Good luck, buddy. Good luck. Say hi for your family. Right? No, no Viagra. No, no, no. Just my points in your face. Hey, don't. Relax. Anderson Silva is considered one of the greatest to ever step into the octagon, but his legacy will forever be tainted because of this incident. After his unanimous decision victory over Nick Diaz in 2015, it was revealed that Silva had tested positive for anabolic steroids during a random out-of-competition test, which took place prior to the bout with Diaz, and then tested positive yet again during another test for an illegal substance. You're, you're sticking to your word that you're clean, you, you never use performance enhancing drugs? You no, know, nothing. Never. never in my life. Never in your life. First of all, because... How did you fail again? Silva denied having taken any performance enhancing drugs. His defense? That the samples for his test were tainted after using Viagra. What was in the supplement was a, uh, a sexual enhancement uh, supplement. And the reason I didn't go to the doctors is because this particular supplement they don't have here in the U.S. or in Brazil. My friend brought it from Thailand, and that's why I was taking that. The Nevada State Athletic Commission didn't buy it, and he was suspended a year, fined $380,000, and his win against Diaz was changed to a no contest. Number seven, Brock Lesnar. You're just so big and you come out of the world That's of pro it. wrestling. <laughs> We're done. Thanks, guys. This pro wrestler turned MMA fighter certainly left his mark in the UFC, but his last fight will not be so fondly remembered. After taking an almost five-year hiatus from the sport, Lesnar would make his anticipated return to the octagon at UFC 200 against Mark Hunt. Lesnar dominated the majority of the fight en route to a unanimous decision victory. 
However, it was revealed that Lesnar had failed two pre-fight drug tests and tested positive for clomiphene, an anti-estrogen agent that can raise testosterone levels and counter effects of steroid use. Prohibited by the UFC's anti-doping policy, Lesnar was suspended a year and was slapped a fine of $250,000, which he reportedly has yet to pay. Number 6. Jake LaMotta LaMotta was a fan favorite in boxing and is often best known for having been portrayed by actor Robert De Niro in the Martin Scorsese classic Raging Bull. What do you think you're doing out there? Huh? Oh, slow, that's what, what are you doing out there? What some people might not know about LaMotta, however, was that he once threw away a match. He could beat all the Sugar Ray Robinsons and the Tony De Niro's in the world, but he ain't gonna get a shot at that title, not without us, he ain't. Prior to facing Billy Fox in 1947, he cut a deal with the Mafia where in exchange for purposefully losing the fight, they would set him up for a title shot. They came to my brother with a proposition that if I lost the fight, I would be guaranteed a shot for the title. And I agree. LaMotta did as he was told and took a dive in the fourth round. After an investigation into his victory, and when LaMotta would later admit wrongdoing, he was suspended indefinitely by the New York State Athletic Commission. And he only wound up getting his title shot 10 fights later. The end comes dramatically in the 10th round when Sir Dan cannot answer the bell. This left arm, injured in the fall of the first round, proves Sir Dan's undoing, and Jake LaMotta is the new middleweight champion. Number 5. Mike Kyle Having earned himself a reputation as one of the dirtiest fighters of all time, Mike Kyle isn't doing himself any favors. Uh, I apologize for my mistakes if I've ever, you know, for the people I hurt. But like I said, I wouldn't take it back because all it's done is made me more mature. And, uh, you know, all the adversity is for a reason. He's done everything you shouldn't do. But one moment is most often notoriously remembered. At WEC 20 back in 2006, Kyle threw an illegal soccer kick against his opponent, Brian Olsen. Olsen was knocked out, and to make matters even worse, he wouldn't stop punching Olsen even though he was unconscious to the point where not one, but two refs had to pull him off. He was immediately disqualified and suspended indefinitely. Number 4. Antonio Margarito After his boxing match against the aforementioned Shane Mosley, Antonio Margarito was getting his hands wrapped. Mosley's trainer, Nazim Richardson, noticed a plaster-like substance being used over the fighter's hands. There was such a distraction about the tape on the wrist. You know, that, that could be the fake out. I'll show you this to give you something else. So I checked the pad, and when I checked the pad, it felt hard. Richardson requested that Margarito's hands be rewrapped, and they were. Although Margarito went on to lose the fight, a hearing was still held to deal with the matter, which took place prior to the fight. There's a big left hook. Why not stop it now? And there's the right towel from the corner, and Shane Mosley has annihilated Antonio Margarito. Despite claiming ignorance, both Margarito and the trainer responsible for wrapping the fighter's hands, Javier Capatillo, had their boxing licenses revoked for one year for the incident. Number 3. TJ Dillashaw. Oh yeah, the guy's on everything. Yeah. He's on everything. TJ? Yeah, I'm on everything. Come and te they test me every day, so come on, I'm on everything. <laughs> Funny, you're the one that showed everyone how to do it on Team Alpha Male. Aiming to become the third person to become a champion in two weight divisions, UFC bantamweight champion TJ Dillashaw challenged then flyweight champion Henry Cejudo in a super fight back in 2019, which he lost the fight by TKO in just 30 seconds. But the worst was yet to come for Dillashaw. Months later, it was revealed that he tested positive for recombinant human erythropoietin, also known as EPO, a hormone which increases red blood cell production in the body. You know what I mean? That's, that's, just, that's what it is. Um, no one cares about why I did it because they're all excuses. You know, everyone has one and they all stink. While Dillashaw claimed the purpose for resorting to this tactic came after becoming anemic due to a drastic weight cut to 125 pounds, he was stripped of his title and accepted a two-year ban from the sport of MMA. His legacy and reign in the bantamweight division forever tarnished. I pushed my body to the extreme, man. I mean, no excuses. I, I made the mistake of uh, of uh, wanting to do something that hadn't been done, and uh, you know, stole my soul to the devil. And, and now I gotta I gotta build myself back up and and deal with it, right? Number two, Vitor Belfort. Man, everybody's doping, man. UFC, even John Jones can fight in different organizations, so they can change a fight. You guys, come on, man. This knockout artist was caught testing positive for the illegal substance 4-hydroxytestosterone after his fight with Dan Henderson at Pride 32. Claiming he was unaware that the supplement he took contained the substance, he was still handed a nine-month suspension and fined $10,000. Although he's only been caught once, this hasn't stopped pundits from claiming Belfort has been using performance-enhancing drugs throughout his entire career. 
Since the UFC banned the use of testosterone replacement therapy in 2014, many have pointed to Belfort's change in physique. And he's a guy who was known to take things. I mean, mm. he took things early in his career. Remember when he fought Randy when he oh, was yeah. 19? He was 240 pounds. Yeah, he was yeah fucking, exactly. His neck started at the top of his head. According to a report from Deadspin, a test for his fight against then light heavyweight champion John Jones at UFC 152 revealed he had high elevated levels of testosterone and that the UFC ignored it. The UFC has denied his claim. The Vitor Belfort was on steroids when I fought him. The UFC was very well um, aware um, way before the fight. They did nothing to, to penalize him. They uh, let the fight go on knowing that I was fighting a guy on steroids, which is a hazard to my life. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Louis Resto On the night of June 16, 1983, boxers Billy Ray Collins and Louis Resto squared off at Madison Square Garden. For 10 rounds, they went back and forth, but Collins looked practically unrecognizable after having taken significant damage. Resto countering oh, beautifully, yes, Jake. Yes, 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 yes. When the match concluded, Resto went to shake the hands of Collins' corner. One of the cornermen, who is Collins' father, noticed something odd with Resto's gloves. He realized there was a lack of padding, and it was later confirmed by a referee. The New York State Athletic Commission went on to suspend Resto and his trainer Carlos Lewis, and both men even served prison sentences as well. 18 days after what had briefly appeared to be his greatest victory, Louis Resto's boxing career was over. But the consequences of that night in the ring for Louis and so many others were just beginning. Resto would never box again. Sadly, Billy Ray Collins' eye was damaged beyond repair and was told he would never fight again and would suffer from depression before he passed away in a car accident. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.